That concludes our public participation. <clears throat> Brings us to item 12, which is action as necessary appropriate on matters discussed in executive session. We actually have two items. If it's the will of the board, I'd like to ask the board that we take up the item 3B, which is selecting employment items, since the item 13 is the actual evaluation of our superintendent. So I would entertain a motion regarding selected employment items. Mr. Cates. Mr. Chairman, I move we give approval to selected employment items as presented in Exhibit B. We have a second. Mr. Loveless seconds. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please raise your hand. And that passes unanimously. That brings us to item number 13, <clears throat> which is the evaluation of the superintendent, Dr. Milton, for the 2018-19 academic year. And I would just say before we entertain a motion here that the board spent, the board spends a lot of time with our superintendent, number one. And secondly, tonight we spent several hours of bringing together goals and objectives that the superintendent has been working on with her staff and where she's made progress on those goals and how she's met those goals and so forth. And we, we spent time together discussing the overall evaluation and focus areas for next year. So I want to compliment the board. It was a great process tonight. We went through a very good exercise and, and um, we recognize it. We have a very astute leader among us. We appreciate that and this audience and this community knows that too. So with that, I'd just say I thank everyone for that input and I'd entertain any motions at this time. Mr. Lovelace. Uh, Mr. Chairman, after reviewing Dr. Melton's report on the district's progress and after considering the board members' comments regarding Dr. Melton's performance, I move that we conclude as a board that Dr. Melton receive an overall excellent, exceptional uh, evaluation for the 2018-2019 school year. We have a second to the motion. Ms. Hutchison seconds. Any discussion? It would be a great time if anybody wanted to say anything, but you said it all with your work tonight. You don't have to, but I, don't, I think I said it for, for a while. I, Dr. Melton, I, I know how difficult it's been for you to, you know, for a first year superintendent. And um, as we said, a lot of things were thrown at you that, that, you know, that weren't necessarily, you know, of the, of the standard. But, um, you know, I think you've done an excellent job, and I think that, um, you know, that hopefully, you know, that we can uh, continue to uh, make, to, to, to let you reach, you know, for us and, and your staff. I mean, everybody here knows how hard you work, and, uh, you know, we need to, we need to, uh, we appreciate you for that, for, you know, for reaching for the stars, and, and not many people would take on, on a district of this size and of this nature, and, you know, in their first year, and I, I, I want to say, you know, that we appreciate that. Great words, Mr. Lovis, and you said it very well. We do appreciate the job that you've done and you continue to do. We know that the staff does a great job. We know that, that working in this district carries many demands, and demands for excellence, demands to do the very best for our students, and we appreciate that. From the staff, from the, from the bus driver good to the school, right on through, it's a team effort. That, it's very evident in the back to school rally this year. There's such pride, in fact, such pride in this district, and it shows throughout, and the end, Result is we want the best opportunity possible for our students, and we think your administration has provided that. And we appreciate that, and this community appreciates that. I, I will tell my age by telling you I moved to this district as a young married man in 1972. We didn't have children. This district had a reputation of being a great education district, period, and it has built, it has grown, and the expectation is for excellence every day, and that's a great expectation. And it puts a lot of pressure, but I've seen this staff and you rise to that occasion day after day. So thank you so much. You're doing a great job and we appreciate it for you and the staff. Thank you. Ms. 
purchase. Thanks. Y'all all saw me pull out my computer, and I think it's about 1,600 words. I promise I won't read all of it. But um, And then I had to stop and come to the meeting. So anyway, it was just an example of, of how many um, examples of Dr. Melton's leadership that I wanted to point out. Um, I mentioned that you have a great vision and very visionary, and um, one example is the fact that the um, teacher shortage we're facing and your Teaching Five um, program that I think was a really big success resulted in an 18% increase in student, I mean in um, attendance this year with very positive survey results. Um, you've been very creative. I think the, the establishment of the first and five um, committee to support and, and engage first year teachers was, was great, was ex very exciting, and with the help of the foundation um, support and so many others and so many other um, established teachers. You think outside the box to find solutions for our students. You know, one of the ones was um, helping some of the students get to jobs after school, even if they don't have their own transportation, by making it possible for all students in School District 5 to use their um, District 5 ID as a free pass to ride the common bus system. And I think that's just amazing. And that, that will help, I think, with um, tardiness, um, with attendance, it will help them get to their jobs. I, I think it's just amazing. Um, you're a very inclusive leader, uh, very respectful of individuals, and very quick to acknowledge um, the staff's uh, contributions and how they succeed and how well they do in, in benefiting the students of School District 5. Communication from you is, has increased, under you has increased greatly, and thanks to Dr. Um, Dr. Coggins, did you hear I just gave you a, a promotion? Uh, but I think that's really good. I recently um, signed up to follow you on Twitter. I didn't know what I was getting into, so if y'all have not signed up, I know a lot of you are on it. She tweets and ret retweets all the time, and the other morning I was up at six o'clock and I looked and she had tweeted something, and I, it said three hours earlier. I said, at three o'clock in the morning, she's tweeting, so you are communicating. By, by this means of communication, so many more, you're reaching across the district. You're uh, reaching employees who might not have that much exposure to you, but you're also uh, reaching out to our community members, which is very important because anyone can follow you. So uh, if you don't follow her, I definitely encourage you to do that. Um, and certainly you have outstanding leadership skills, several examples of that. Critical thinking skills is something that I, was the first thing that came to my mind when I was thinking about this evaluation. Um, you're very analytical, which we knew from your time as the chief instruction officer. And you look at problems or situations from a lot of different angles. And that's important, you look at the consequences and not everybody is skilled in that area, but I think that's, for superintendent, that's a necessary skill. So, you know, my, my recommendation or is that as a first year superintendent or my, is that you really didn't act like a first year superintendent. You, you really, I think you have been, had this idea of how you would like to run school district five whenever given the opportunity, because you had so many wonderful ideas right in place. So thank you for everything you do and the way that you have helped your staff do such a great job as well. All those in favor, please raise your hand. And that passes unanimous. Are there any other motions? Mr. Cates. Mr. Chairman, as a result of Dr. Melton's overall exceptional evaluation, I move that we authorize you to execute an amendment to Dr. Melton's contact with the district, the terms of which were reviewed and discussed with the board during the executive session, which provides for, among other things, an extension of her contract for one year through June 30, 2022, 
an additional 2% increase in our annual salary, effective July 1, 2019, an additional 5% increase in our annuity each year for the next three years, beginning with the annuity payment in October of 2019, all of which will continue to be contingent on a satisfactory evaluation as determined by the board during the school year immediately prior to the annual contribution. An additional $350 per month for a monthly automobile allowance and the uh, applicability of board policy to her accrued sick leave and vacation leave. Thank you, Mr. Cates. Is there a second to Mr. Cates? Mr. White. Mr. White seconds a motion. I'll hand down. Any discussion, Mr. White? I was second. I was having a hard time getting on because I think okay. I'm Any discussion about the provisions and changes, proposed changes to the contract? I, I will add one comment, um, probably with, to our earlier motion, but there's times where we very, very rarely agree on this board, and I think everybody in, on this board was very much in support of you and what you've done and your vision for the future. And I would suppose if our other two board members were here, they would be right in line with us. I mean, it really was exciting to see everybody in, in, you know, moving in the same direction with, with these recommendations tonight. Any other comment? Seeing none, <clears throat> there a motion, a second. All those in favor of the amendments to the contract, please raise your hand. And that passes unanimously. Mr. Second. Chairman, just to, for the record, uh, for Ms. Stowers, I'll get you a clean copy of that, minus all my scribbling and, and math, but we'll get you a clean copy of the motion as presented. Now, the last words I'm going to say are congratulations on an extremely well done year one. <clears throat> We'd like to think there are a lot more years to follow. And we appreciate your leadership in School District 5. So thank you. Please join me in applauding. <laughs>
because our decisions, our behavior, it influences the reputation of education. And Dr. Jakes uses our story to recruit, and we use our story, bless you, we use our story to retain. And I am just so proud and privileged to have the, op the opportunity to work in this district and have the opportunity to be in this position. So Mr. Gant, I, I regret for taking this off agenda, but thank you for that opportunity, for my going on record for that. Ms. Goggins, you're actually next on the agenda. So Ms. Goggins is bringing forth our recommendation, and I'm so proud as Ms. Goggins creates the context for you, the engagement we had in bringing forth this recommendation to the board this evening. So I'll turn the mic over now to Ms. Goggins. Thank you, Dr. Mountain. Board members, School District 5 closed schools and offices on Thursday, September 5th due to strong winds and other expected impacts of Hurricane Dorian. By law, districts and school in South Carolina are required to include at, at least three severe weather makeup days in each year's academic school calendar. For School District 5, those potential makeup days, which were approved by the board, are for the current academic calendar year, and they include October 7th, October 25th and 28th, February 17th, March 13th and 16th, and April 10th. In bringing a recommendation to the board tonight, the administration received input from parent leaders, principals, teachers, and staff using both discussion and surveys. With the input of these stakeholder groups, the, the administration recommends that the school board approve Monday, October 7th to make up the day loss on September 5th due to inclement weather closure. And I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Members, any questions? Ms. Goggins, I, I know these decisions are never made in a vacuum. And in fact, I was a parents advisory cabinet and the discussion was there among the leadership groups. I did have a question from a parent <clears throat> and uh, about an event that's planned for November this, excuse me, October the 7th. And it's a large, I believe, student government activity. This is going to be at Spring Hill High School. So I assume that's all countered in this. I don't believe it's quite as large as the event that took place, I believe, at Chapin High School last year, which was a statewide. This may be a regional. But that's the only question I've had from the community after that meeting we had with uh, Parents Advisory Academy a couple of weeks ago. So we're, we're filled with coverage. Uh, Mr. Gant, I can say quite frankly, I wasn't aware of a conflict with that. So Ms. Goggins surveyed our advisory committees. Uh, we have surveyed and polled the principals. So we likely need to put a pause on this to have an opportunity to talk to Dr. Lofton. We, of course, did not come prepared to engage him with the conversation this evening. So as you referenced earlier, for Spring, for Chapin High School last year, it was a statewide conference that we had. So we had to work around those variables. And I congratulate Mr. Ames and his team and our safety officers for making sure we could work around it. Um, I'm confident that we can find a solution to make sure that this doesn't become a distraction for School District 5, but um, if it's of concern to you based upon the parent that shared with you, then we could certainly pause for further discussion. If I, had, if I hadn't gotten that call late, I'd probably brought it quicker, but I did see a thumbs up. I believe Dr. Lawton's indicating they've covered it. They feel like they're trying to fix I don't want to put you on the spot. So at this point, we are we need a, a motion on the approval of the makeup day as recommended by the administration. Do I see a motion, Mr. Gates? Mr. Chairman, I move to give approval of the school makeup days uh, as presented in Exhibit E, Monday, October the seventh. Have a second, Mr. Lovelace. Seconds. Any further discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, please raise your hand. And that brings us to our uh, item 16, which is our adjournment. And we've had a very, very good night. Dr. Duffin, thank you for <clears throat> submitting yourself to this evaluation and uh, performing so well on the evaluation. We appreciate it. And for your staff, too. We know it, didn't. it does not happen alone. And I love what you said about Justin Owens. Anyway, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Mr. White. I make a motion that we adjourn.
We have a second. Mr. Cage seconds. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please raise your hand. And I thank you very much. Passage unanimously.